Hello guys, how are you all? Myself CH Chavla, faculty for CA Final Financial Reporting. So I welcome you all for this important session on India's chart revisions. So what is this India's chart revision? First of all, let me tell you, India's chart revision is specifically relevant for exam purpose. You just refer these lectures immediately before the exams so that in a very short span of time, like in one hour, just one hour, you will be able to cover the entire India's, entire single India's. So what I am going to do in this particular series, in the series of India's chart revision, I will cover most important topics, especially special India's. Now from where or from which nodes I will cover these India's chart revisions. As you can see, these are the charts. I will refer, I will all refer all the topics from these charts. If you want to purchase this chart book, this is the chart book. If you can see, this is a 60 page chart book and in the 60 pages, everything is covered. Everything means everything. All the Indias are covered. So if you want to purchase the chart book, you can see the description and click the link for the purchase. Okay. Now I don't want to waste your time for discussing irrelevant talks. So let's come to the point. First of all, let me tell you one thing. As I said, because we are left with so much, uh, with not so much uh, time, we have limited time. So I will cover limited Indias only. As far as big Indias are concerned, like a uh, business combination, consolidation, financial instrument, I have already uploaded a good amount of lectures, revision lectures in details. And uh, you, you, you can definitely rely on them. What you need to do, you just go to the description of this video and click on the playlist. The playlist name is this one, FR exemption series. So I have already uploaded some of the good important uh, Indias on this FR exemption series. Other than that, the topics which are not covered in the FR exemption series, those topics I will cover in this chart book. Okay. Now, other than this chart book, you will find the list of important questions. The list of 164 important questions, which you should cover, you must do immediately before the exams. Yes, you can rely on these questions. For all the Indias, I have covered 164 important questions. So uh, the description in the description, you will find the link to download this. Now what I will do right now, first of all, I will start this topic, India's 21 effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. You must know that it is a very, very important topic. Also, along with the chart revision, I will discuss few questions on the same portion. Okay. So let's start and uh, okay, let's start. India is 21 effects of changes in foreign exchange exchange rates. First of all, basics. There are three types of currencies. First, foreign currency. Second, functional currency. Third, presentation currency. Now, what is the relevance of these three currencies? Foreign currency means any currency other than functional currency. See, out of these three currencies, functional currency is the most important currency for us. Okay, so foreign currency means any currency which is other than functional currency. Sir, what is functional currency? Uh, without discussing any definition, first of all, just uh, look at me and, uh, and listen to me. Functional currency means the currency in which you actually going to make journal entries. You actually going to uh, make your books of accounts. Functional currency is the currency where actually everything, every financial statement needs to be prepared. Okay, this is the functional currency. Functional currency is the currency which is actually part of your heart. So you think from functional currency point of view. Generally for Indian entities, what is the functional currency? Definitely rupees. Okay. Now what is the presentation currency? Sometimes, sometimes we need to present our financial statements in another currency also. Why? Suppose I have a functional currency of rupee. Okay. So I will prepare my financial statements as per functional currency only. But suppose my shares are listed on a uh, stock exchange outside India. Suppose NASDAQ, America. My, stock, my, my shares are listed on the American stock exchange. So I have to prepare my financial statements in US dollar also for the purpose of submission of my financial statement to the stock exchange. So US dollar will become my presentation currency. Alright. So presentation currency is definitely can be uh, can be equal to functional currency also and it can be other than functional currency also. Okay. Now, once again, come to the functional currency. What I told you, the currency in which actually you prepare your books of accounts is a functional currency. Now, what is the definition? Functional currency is a currency of primary economic environment. Primary economic environment in which entity primarily generates and expands the cash. Now, basically, the, curren the currency of a country 
the currency of a country in that country you actually generate your cash and you actually generate your uh, expand your cash for example you have your operations in india and you have your operations in uh, in 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 bangladesh okay now but your major sales generates from india only the 10% of the sales portion generates from bangladesh so okay you are you are operating in bangladesh also and while operating in bangladesh you generate the sale in bangladesh currency also bangladeshi rupiah but your primary what is your primary environment indian environment or bangladesh your entire country is dependent on indian environment because your 90% of the sale is dependent on indian environment so the indian currency will be the functional currency are you guys understanding or not so technically uh, uh, which is the prime environment in which you are operating your business that the currency of prime environment will become the functional currency now this was a basic this was a basic india's 21 has uh, uh, drafted four important indicators how we can identify our functional currency so to identify the functional currency india's 4 has drafted the four indicators now before coming to these four indicators let us first of all understand what do you mean by foreign operation foreign operation foreign operation means any subsidiary company any subsidiary company which is operating in a different country or which is operating may be operating in the same country but with a different currency yes different currency so i am a parent company i have my currency i have my functional currency as rupee my subsidiary is operating in india also or uh, in uh, india also but my subsidiary's functional currency may be dollar so uh, if my foreign operation is operating with different currency it is my foreign operation if my subsidiary is operating with a different currency it is my foreign operation or in a different country then also it is a foreign operation okay india is 21 also talks about foreign operations treatment also because foreign operation has different currency we have a different currency for the purpose of consolidation the currency should be same so what will be the treatment it talks about the foreign operation also but when we when we when we identify our own functional currency look at to me i am the parent company i am here right now i am not talking about my foreign operation like foreign subsidiary so if i want to identify my own functional currency i have to see these four indicators i have to see these four indicators out of which two these two are the first two are primary and the second uh, and the next two are secondary indicators now what are the indicators these are the indicators for identifying functional currency currency that influence the selling price of goods and services or whose competitive forces or regulations determine the selling price which is the currency i am depending upon or my goods and services my sale price of goods and services uh, is getting influenced by us currency because actually i purchase the goods from us market and sell them in india now for selling them in india i have to first purchase from us market so the purchase depends on us and based on the purchase i decide my selling price maybe so selling price of goods and services is influenced by which currency that currency can be your functional currency or uh which country's competitive force competition or which country's regulations decides your selling price of the goods and service like uh, consider the example of petrol so technically indian government imports the crude oil from south uh, so, so not not south from, from arab countries okay majorly the oil is imported from arab countries but that oil is getting sold at in india in the form of petrol other petroleum products diesel crude oil so the price the regulations of india determines the selling price of petrol and other petroleum products so technically even though we import it from arab countries we purchase it in in the form of dollar but the selling price of goods and services are actually decided by the indian government considering regulations of india so technically indian regulations determine the selling price so my functional currency is only the indian currency understood or not so this is the first indicator you should consider for determining your functional currency why because see determining functional currency is very important once you have decided your functional currency then only you start accounting and your functional currency could only be one only as far as foreign currency it can be more than one presentation currency more than one but functional currency can only be one now the next indicator if the functional currency cannot be decided based on the selling price of goods and services it can be decided based on the cost price you incurred what is the major cost of goods and services like material labor and direct overheads like what is the major cost you incur in which currency 
the major cost you incur in indian currency then your indian currency can be the functional currency the major cost of goods and services like material labor directly attributable cost you incur in uh, uh, in in dollars so your dollar could be the functional currency these are the two primary indicators now the secondary suppose you cannot decide your functional currency based on the two indicators now what will you do you can go with the secondary indicators also currency in which funds from financing activities are generated funds from financing activity means loan taking loan taking borrowings in your entire company you have equity capital preference capital loans debt funds the entire funding is 100 crore out of 100 crore suppose i am saying that 80 crore 80 crore is generated in india only and 20 crore is generated from us funds so major funds are generated in indian currency 80 crore so my uh, functional currency is indian currency so out of the total funding out of the total funding of equity capital preference capital debentures long term loans and borrowings uh, the major amount of funds generated in india so your indian currency is functional currency generated in uh, generated from us so your us dollar will be the functional currency understood or not next currency in which receipts from operating activities are retained when you sell your goods and services when you when you earn something from your business in which currency you retain your profit entity retains the profit in us dollar only because suppose entity has uh, no faith in indian currency or any other currency they have faith in us currency only because us is just a, uh, uh, the most stable currency so if generally we uh, save our money we retain our profit in us currency our us currency can be the functional currency guys understood or not now out of these four you you can check all these four indicators also and entity can apply one or more indicators to identify the functional currency suppose first indicator uh, is in favor of indian second is in favor of us currency third and fourth are in favor of indian so three indicators are in favor of indian currency so my functional currency should be rupees okay so major indicators are in favor of which currency that currency will be your functional currency i hope you got, you got the point what is our functional currency okay uh, currency in which sales price is denominated is not an indicator see here we 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 actually talked about the currency which influence the sale price the currency in which sale price are denominated is not the one suppose i always sell suppose i am i am i am selling one cold drink one cold drink all over the world in us dollar in india also i sell the cold drink in us dollar in every country i sell the cold drink in us dollar so the sale is getting denominated in dollar but you don't you don't need to check the dollar you have to check that i sell my cold drink in india i sell my cold drink in other asian countries also but from which country i have a major sales i have a major sale from india only like 70 percent sale from india only even though it is getting de denominated the sale is getting denominated in dollar but i have a major sale in india only so indian currency will be my functional currency so which currency influence your sales not denomination so the denomination is not important i hope you got the point now come to the next so so uh, i told you already that i am a holding company my subsidy is also there foreign subsidy is also there so these are the four indicators which i have to identify for, for my own functional currency now what about the functional currency of my subsidiary the functional currency of my foreign subsidiary it totally depends whether my foreign operation my foreign subsidiary is dependent on me is totally dependent on me its business is dependent on my business whether i can control fully on my foreign subsidiary if yes my foreign subsidiary's functional currency will be same as my functional currency suppose my functional currency is rupees my foreign currency's foreign subsidiary's functional currency will also be rupees so if foreign currency is totally dependent on me dependent on me for example i only transfer my goods and services to the foreign subsidiary and they can sell if i will not transfer the goods and services they will not purchase from the local market so they are totally dependent on me i have given the funds to my foreign subsidiary for operating the business so they are dependent on me i take all type of decisions operating decisions of my foreign subsidiary so they are dependent on me for all the decisions so technically if my foreign operation is dependent on me my foreign operations functional currency would be same as the functional currency of me okay but if my foreign operation is independent independent they have their local purchases they they do not purchase the goods and service from me okay they have their own funding they borrow the money from local market only they have their own decision making so if the foreign operation is not dependent on me totally or majorly they have majorly they are they are uh, doing their business by their own decision making 
that means it is an independent foreign operation and for as far as independent foreign operation they may have a different functional currency from parent currency so i have a uh, functional currency as a rupee i am a parent company i have a rupee as a functional currency but my foreign subsidiary which is a independent it may have a different functional currency depending upon the indicators guys understood or not so for foreign subsidiaries functional currency can be same as parents functional currency or may not be same as parents functional currency it depends on whether it has dependency or not okay i hope you got the point so these were the three important basic points which everybody should know about india s21 now let us come to the let us come to the foreign currency transactions now first of all before starting this just look at this what is the scope of india s21 india s21 overall talks about these four treatments the first is foreign currency transactions the second in foreign operations financial statement what is the relevance of first one foreign currency transaction you purchase you sell you take a loan you make the investment in foreign currency of course if you are doing all these in foreign currency you will not record all these things in foreign currency only for the recording purpose you need to translate these items into functional currency so the first one is this how to develop fct under fct you have to understand foreign to functional basically the translation how to translate the foreign currency transaction to functional currency this is the first relevance second you have your foreign subsidiary and the foreign subsidiary's financial statements are prepared on another currency and your financial statements are prepared on another currency different currency for the purpose of consolidation the financial statements of foreign operation need to be translated in the functional currency of parent company so the second treatment so india s21 has these four relevance third suppose your functional currency is indian rupee your functional currency is indian rupee and you have to prepare your financial statements in dollar because of the reason that your uh, your uh, shares are also listed in the american stock exchange or you have taken the loan from american uh, american bank so technically you have to present your financial statements in dollar also so you have to convert your financial statements own financial statements from functional to presentation currency this is the third scope and the last scope is net investment in foreign operation now this is quite different and this is i'll 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 discuss this also uh, when i'll discuss then i'll explain also don't worry so these are the four scope now first of all let's begin with foreign currency transaction like we have uh, we have entered into a transaction in foreign currency so it's quite simple we have entered into a transaction with foreign currency all the transactions other than net investment in foreign operation see out of the scope the fourth one was net investment in foreign operation so please do not think about this i'll discuss it separately so simple all the transactions mean all all the transactions means uh, all the transactions means sales purchases loans investments and all all transactions okay so first of all when you when you enter into the transaction for the first time suppose today uh, the 24th of march i entered into the transaction on 24th of march into the sale purchase into the sale purchase transaction what to do uh, initial recognition i will i will i will enter into a foreign i i entered into a foreign uh, currency transaction on 24th march initial recognition i record the transaction at the spot rate now what is the spot rate the spot rate is the exchange rate prevailing on 24 march so as soon as i entered into a transaction on any date the exchange rate on such date will be taken for the purpose of translation of all the foreign currency transaction so whenever you record the transaction first time translate it at spot rate understood now <coughs> suppose you recorded the transaction first time at spot rate now what to do now what to do subsequent measurement subsequent measurement happens at balance sheet date subsequent measurement happens at balance sheet date now why suppose i entered into a transaction a uh, foreign currency transaction and i recorded the transaction as like debtors suppose foreign debtors to sales foreign debtors to sales and suppose these foreign debtors are appearing on my balance sheet also foreign debtors are appearing on my balance sheet also so based on all these transaction i have to check that on balance sheet date is there any foreign currency balance which is right now unsettled is there any asset or liability which is still as a originally as a foreign currency balance out of this transaction so whenever i record this transaction first of all first uh, first time 
I have to take spot rate. But on balance sheet date, I have to check that on my balance sheet, in my balance sheet, is there any foreign currency balance? Okay, I translated this foreign debtors in Indian currency, but originally it is to be settled in foreign currency. Na? So foreign debtors become the foreign currency balance. So, so on subsequent measurement, see, if you, if you uh, look at the things, suppose uh, 24 of March, okay, it is initial recognition. It is initial recognition, uh, $10,000. So foreign debtors to sales. Ten thousand dollars multiplied by suppose this spot rate was one dollar into uh, into eighty. So multiplied by eighty. Multiplied by eighty. Simple. But on balance sheet date thirty first, thirty first of March, my debtors are appearing. My debtors are appearing. Originally they are to be settled at ten thousand. I will get ten thousand dollars from my debtor, and it is being shown at eight lakhs. Ten thousand into eighty. 10,000 into 80, 8 lakhs. Okay. But now on 31st March, suppose the debtors are not yet settled. So debtor will become my foreign currency balance. Are you guys understood? So debtor will become my foreign currency balance. Other than that, suppose instead of, uh, uh, suppose in, uh, instead of debtors, now I have entered into one more transition on 25th of March. 25th of March. Suppose I purchased, I purchased PPE, property plan and equipment in uh, $25,000. I purchased PP in $25,000 on 25 March. So definitely on 25 March, my $1 barabar, uh, is equal to uh, 80.25. Let us say 80.25. So here also my PP is getting recorded, which is originally of $25,000. It is to be recorded at $25,000 into 80.25. $25,000 into 80.25. So it is Technically, 20 lakhs, 6,250. So, is there any foreign currency balance? Yes, the PP also is, is originally at foreign currency balance. So, debtor is my foreign currency balance. PP is my foreign currency balance. So, what to do? Technically, on balance sheet date, we need to check from our balance sheet, is there any foreign currency balances? So, we are dividing all these foreign currency balances into two parts. The first, foreign currency monetary items. Now, what is foreign currency monetary item? What is foreign currency monetary item? Foreign currency monetary item is basically known as debtor. Foreign currency monetary item is basically known as debtor. Now, what is foreign currency monetary item? See, uh, monetary item uh, can be asset or liability. Monetary item means any asset or liability whose value is fixed. Debtor, having a fixed value. I'll get the $10,000 after one month or two months. What is the credit period? So, once the credit period will become over, I will get $10,000 only. So, $10,000 is the fixed amount I will get from my debtors. Okay. So, debtor I will treat it as a monetary item. And I am going to recover it in the form of foreign currency. So it will become the foreign currency monetary item. But as far as PP is concerned, it is not the monetary item. Because PP, every time I need to depreciate it. So any asset or liability whose value is not fixed, it, it becomes a non-monetary. So what is monetary? What is non-monetary? Monetary means the asset or liability whose value is fixed. For example, debtors, the value is fixed. I will get the fixed amount. Creditor, I will pay the fixed amount. Loan, I will pay the... The contractual amount, principal amount, interest is the expense technically. So loans, uh, as uh, debtors, creditors, these all are monetary. What is non-monetary? Non-monetary whose value is not fixed, like inventory, uh, PPE, investment in equity shares. These are non-monetary. So what I have to do uh, on balance sheet date, I have to divide uh, on balance sheet date for the purpose of applying India's 21. I have to divide these into two parts. First, foreign currency monetary items like debtors, creditors. Just write foreign FCMI means debtor, creditor, loan. Please write it down. FCMI means debtor, creditor and loan. And non-monetary items which are measured at FBTPL. Like, uh, are there any non-monetary items which are which you measure them at fair value? Like, uh, suppose investment in equity shares. There's an option to measure the investment in equity shares at fair value as per the India's 109. If you remember, India's 109 financial instrument says that if you have investment in equity share, you can measure them at fair value. And uh, fair value gain will be transferred to p &L. Or... Uh, or uh, uh, inventory, inventory is measured at cost or NRV, whichever is lower. And ultimately, the inventory always appears in the uh, in the profit and loss account. So whenever you measure the inventory at cost or NRV, whichever is lower, and suppose the NRV is lower, the loss is definitely reflected in the PNL only. So what are the assets and liabilities which are non-monetary, which you measure them at other than cost, technically other than cost, uh, and through PNL. So I what I did, what I did, suppose. Uh, one more page I should include. Suppose in my balance sheet, in my balance sheet, there is PPE. There is one more PPE. PPE one, who's, who, which was actually purchased at 
thousand dollar. There is one more PPE two which was actually purchased at thirty thousand dollar. There is debtor. There is debtor which was actually ten thousand dollar. Other than that, there is an inventory. There is an inventory which was uh, actually purchased at twelve thousand dollar. Ha na? And there is a there is one more debtor. Debtor one. There is one more debtor. Debtor two, which is originally in rupee. Which is only in rupee. Now, out of these all. This is not to be considered in India S twenty one because it is originally in rupee. It has no relevance. Uh, this is not a foreign currency transaction technically. Okay, leave it. Now, as far as PP one is concerned, PP PP are non monetary. It is non monetary. It is non monetary. Debtor, these are monetary. These are monetary. Inventory, it is non monetary. Okay, fine. Now suppose PP one I measure at cost model. PP one I measure at cost model. What is cost model? India sixteen. India sixteen gives you the option either follow cost model or revaluation model. Suppose PP two it is revaluation model. Suppose it is under revaluation model. Revaluation model and inventory. We all know that inventory is measured at cost or NRV, whichever is lower. So technically today the NRV is lower. So I measured it at NRV. So please try to understand. Uh, the first category, the first category was foreign currency monetary items, मतलब debtors and non-monetary items, which are measured at FPTPL. Now, if you if you think that PP, which is measured at cost model, even though it has foreign currency balance, no, leave it, ignore it. So those non-monetary items which you measure at cost only, ignore them. Now what remains? Debtors, PP two and inventory. Out of them. Debtors are definitely monetary items, so they come under this category FCMI. Okay. Uh, inventory. These are non-monetary items and measured at NRV. By measuring at NRV, the loss is, the loss will be definitely reflected in PNL. So also inventory and debtors. Inventory and debtors come in the same category like this. Inventory and debtors come in the same category. So FCMI is a debtor and non-monetary item which is measured at profit and loss. Measured through profit and loss, it is also the inventory which is come in the same category. But what about sir PP two? Now PP two, PP two is a non-monetary item which is originally at thirty thousand dollar. मतलब you purchase the PP from uh, 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 foreign currency at thirty thousand dollar and you make a revaluation. As per India sixteen, India sixteen says whenever you do revaluation, the upward revaluation will always goes to OCI. You remember always goes to OCI. So this is the second category. Now read the second category. The second category is non-monetary item. मतलब PP measured at fair value. मतलब revaluation through OCI. Or through other than PNL, मतलब PP revalued upward. So technically, I have three assets. Technically, I have three assets. See, I have I have three assets: the debtors and inventory, and the PP two. But out of three assets, debtors and inventories fall under this category. Fall under this category, and PP two fall under this category. I am dividing them into two parts. As far as debtor is concerned, as far as inventory is concerned. Uh, on balance sheet date, I will revalue them at the closing rate. Now, why? What is the closing rate? Technically, uh, when I entered into it, when I recorded the debtor, it was eighty rupees on twenty four March. Now, again, the debtor will be revalued as per the balance sheet date. Suppose on balance sheet date, the dollar one becomes eighty one. So, I have to revalue my debtor at eighty one. I have to revalue my inventory at eighty one. I have to revalue my PP at eighty one. Yes, closing exchange rate. Closing exchange rate. See this. Foreign currency monetary item. Non-monetary item measure rate for uh, fair value, closing rate. Apply closing rate, closing rate or exchange rate on the date of measurement. Whenever you measure it, apply the rate. And uh, whatever the exchange gain or loss, you transfer it to PNL. Why PNL? Because it's your foreign currency monetary item. Debtors, they all they they always reflect through PNL. And uh, non-monetary item re-measured through PNL, so always transfer to the gain, exchange loss uh, gain or loss always transfer to PNL. But as far as your non-monetary item, which are Remeasured at fair value through OCI. Again, apply the exchange rate on the date of measurement, like same balance sheet date. If you found, if you if you get any exchange gain or loss, transfer the exchange gain or loss to OCI. Transfer the exchange gain or loss to OCI. So when I when when I when I remeasure my PP two because it is non monetary and it is it is it is getting revalued revalued as per India sixteen. The revaluation gain or uh, the revaluation gain will be transferred to OCI. So its exchange gain also or exchange loss also will be transferred to OCI only. Now for this, I have a very good question. The question number uh, the question number ninety in my important question list. 
important question list question number 90 let me show you one good question let me show you one good question see it is a question number 90 now if you want to uh, if you want me to solve entire question so just refer this qr code in this if, if you refer this qr code you will get the complete video on this question only complete video on this question only you can watch that video in 2x speed or 1.5x speed but let me show you one thing in this question we recorded the machine at 60 rupees first of all so it was a initial recognition spot rate what was it it was a initial recognition it was a initial recognition uh, 60 rupees okay then we recorded the trade payable sorry it is not a trade receivable it is a trade payable we recorded the trade payables also so we recorded machinery we recorded trade payables okay now uh, uh, after that on balance sheet date see on the balance sheet date on the balance sheet date what we did we this trade payable this this trade payable is foreign currency monetary item and this machinery is the non monetary item and the machinery is under revaluation model so it is other than cost other than matlab it is it is revalued it is revalued it is revalued through oci so now technically on balance sheet date i have a machinery balance as well as i have a trade payable balance but trade payable is a fcmi whatever the exchange difference will arise we will transfer it to pnl so the see this we we converted the trade payables we converted the trade payables and the exchange difference is transferred to pnl but when we converted the machine we converted the machine okay the exchange difference is transferred to oci see uh, the the initial rate was 60 the balance sheet date was 65 we converted it into uh, the, we we transferred the exchange gain into oci so this is the difference i want to tell you that when you convert any foreign currency balance foreign currency balance can be your pp foreign currency balance can be your debtor foreign currency balance can be your creditor loan when you convert them apply the closing rate for all the items but after applying closing rate sometimes the exchange gain transfer to pnl sometimes the exchange gain transfer to oci now it depends when the exchange gain will transfer to pnl when there is a fcmi or when there is a non monetary item which is measured at profit and which is measured at fair value through profit and loss sometimes the exchange gain transfer to oci when when the when the non monetary item is measured at fair value through oci now you got the point so if you can refer question number 90 for referring question number 90 this is the sheet the sheet is the sheet will be uh, will be in the description only and you can scan the code you will get the proper video of this question only okay so i hope it is it is properly cleared foreign currency transaction what you need to do initial recognition spot rate on balance sheet date apply the closing rate on fcmi non monetary items measured at fair value through profit and loss and non monetary item measured at fair value through oci now understand after this now come to the second scope now come to the second scope foreign operation financial statement suppose if you have foreign subsidiary if you have foreign subsidiary and it's for, uh, it's a uh, its financial statements are in dollars and you are a parent company and your financial statements are in rupees so what you need to do your uh, your foreign subsidiary's financial statement in dollar need to convert into indian rupees so understand this concept where is the concept understand this concept translation of financial uh, trans uh, translation of financial statements into presentation currency okay so the treatment the treatment of the second and third concept the treatment of second and third concept is same like you want to convert your own financial statement into another presentation currency that means the third one or your foreign operations financial statement should be translated into your own functional currency the second now treatment for these two is same what is the treatment it is here so as i said there are two cases we need to discuss and for those two cases the treatment is same what are the two cases these are the two cases you are a uh, you are a foreign operation your financial statement need to be translated from your functional currency to my functional currency who am i i am your parent second uh, i am 
preparing my financial statements in my functional currency, but I need to translate my financial statement into some other presentation currency. For both the things, rules are same. Now, what are the rules? What are the rules? Before discussing, before discussing the rules, try to understand. First of all, you have to judge whether you are operating in a hyperinflationary economy. The word is hyperinflationary economy. The word is hyperinflationary economy. Now, whether you are operating in a hyperinflationary economy. Now, what is that? These are the characteristics of hyperinflationary economy. You can you can read that because the, uh, the the characteristics are written in as per India's 29. India's 29 is not in our syllabus. But what is the, what are the characteristics of hyperinflationary economy? The first characteristic is uh, the the uh, basically the public of that country of that economy used to uh, save their money in foreign currency, a stable foreign currency. They don't have trust in their own country's currency. That is a hyperinflationary economy. Or if they used to save their money or wealth in own currency, that, that should be in a non-monetary asset, not monetary. Non-monetary means properties. So public of that country used to, used to create their wealth either in foreign currency or in their non-monetary assets, not in the form of monetary because monetary is like cash balance, bank balance, debtors. They don't create their assets in the form of monetary assets. Or the economy where all the monetary amount are, uh, all, all the monetary amounts are quoted in a relatively stable currency rather than local currency. For example, I live in a country which is hyperinflationary economy. Now, uh, whenever, whenever I will sell my product to you on a credit, I will I will I will sell it in other foreign currency only. I will not sell in a local currency because local currency is not uh, trustable. So basically, the hyperinflationary economy is the economy uh, whose local currency is not trustworthy. Okay, uh, last one. The cumulative inf inflation over the three years approaching or exceeds 100%. An economy where the total inflation in three years should be 100% or more. That economy will be the hyperinflationary economy. So these are the characteristics of hyperinflationary economy. So first of all, before applying the cases, we first have to identify that we are operating or our foreign operation is operating in a hyperinflationary economy or not? The first case is no. That is not the case. Like suppose I am not operating in a hyperinflationary economy. For example, India is not a hyperinflationary economy. So, the case number one, functional currency is not the currency of hyperinflationary economy. My functional currency is the currency of Indian economy. Indian economy is not the hyperinflationary economy. What rules I have to follow? Okay? What rules I have to follow? All my assets and liabilities, I have to convert in closing exchange rate. All, all assets and liabilities. It is not like this one. It is not like this one. That on a balance sheet date, non-monetary, monetary, no, 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 not like that. As far as conversions are applied, all assets and liabilities at closing exchange rate. All assets and liabilities are closing exchange rate. Second, all the revenue items like incomes, expenses are to be translated either at actual rate or or average rate if actual rate is not possible. So actual rate if possible, otherwise average rate. If there are any capital transactions, capital transactions means capital expenditures, capital expenditure or uh, capital transactions means capital expenditure or loan taken. Now these capital transactions are very low in quantity. So you can take actual rate. Assets and libraries, closing balance, closing rate. Revenue items, actual rate if possible, otherwise average rate. If there is any capital transaction during the year, then actual rate. Exchange difference, transfer to OCI. Exchange difference, transfer to OCI. Now what I am actually trying to uh, discuss is, there is my trial balance. There is, there is my trial balance. Now, all my items into rupees. All my items are into rupees. There are PPE. There are inventory. There are loans. There are current liabilities. There are sales and purchases and etc. Sales and purchases etc. So now, this PPE, this PPE, inventory, loan, current asset, current liabilities. All these are to be translated into closing rate. All the revenue items are to be translated into average rate, actual if possible, otherwise average. Okay. Now, whenever I will convert my rupee trial balance into some other currency, 
सर वाई देर नीड टू कन्वर्ट रुपी ट्रैल बैलेंस इन टू सम अदर करेंसी बिकॉज माई फंक्शनल करेंसी इज रुपी बट माई प्रेजेंटेशन करेंसी इज डॉलर सो आई नीड टू ट्रांसलेट माई रुपी ट्रायल बैलेंस इन टू डॉलर सो क्लोजिंग क्लोजिंग एक्सचेंज रेट बिटवीन रुपी एंड डॉलर एवरेज रेट बिटवीन रुपी एंड डॉलर इज रिक्वायर्ड सो वेन एवर आई डू आई डू दिस माई ट्रायल बैलेंस इज टू बी नाउ री प्रिपेयर एट डॉलर so definitely there is exchange difference now exchange difference whatever exchange difference will arise the rule is i have to transfer the exchange difference to oci not in pnl not in pnl oci guys are you understanding or not so exchange difference will be transferred to oci clear so this is the this is the basic rule now another case now this is suppose this is the trial balance of my fo this is the trial balance of my fo and my fo is having its functional currency of dollar it's a trial balance of fo and uh, my fo is having a uh, functional currency of dollar now what what i need to do i have to convert this dollar i have to convert this dollar into functional currency of parent company suppose rupee same rule will be applicable all assets liabilities all assets liabilities closing rate theek hai na all incomes expenses average rate exchange difference transfer to oci Exchange difference transfer to OCI. Guys, are you understanding or not? I will transfer the exchange difference to OCI. Sir, what what about this OCI? Uh, like the exchange difference will always be kept in OCI only. See, whenever I will dispose of my foreign operation, I will sell my foreign operation. Whenever I will I will end my foreign operation. Now I have to re uh, reclassify this OCI into PNL if I will uh, dispose of my foreign operation. So what should I write? reclassified reclassified to pnl in case of disposal of foreign operation in case of disposal of foreign operation i have to reclassify it to pnl guys are you understanding so that was the rule case 1 what was the case 1 our functional currency is not the currency of hyperinflationary economy now case 2 case 2 is not at all relevant it is not at all important for the exam because technically hyperinflationary is relating to india's 29 india's 29 is not in our syllabus so if our functional currency is a currency of hyperinflationary economy now we need to convert uh, our functional currency convert, convert our financial statements from functional currency to uh, some other presentation currency and our functional currency is a currency of hyperinflationary economy first of all we need to apply india's 29 which is not in our syllabus so it is it is not a actually big issue the this is not important for the exam so convert our financial statement as per the inflation apply applying the inflation effect on our financial statement first and then apply closing rate on all the items now if you apply closing rate on all the items if you will apply closing rate on all the items it is actually like there will be no exchange difference hence no exchange difference so no exchange difference will be there are you getting my point so this is not important now i hope you got uh, the understanding of this one theek okay? hai now the second is uh, the, the 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 next issue is foreign operation see we understood the basic rules about foreign operation foreign operation financial statements need to be translated into functional currency of parent company apply these rules so now let's come to foreign operation now when we talk about foreign operation the first thing we already talked about foreign operation is that you have the trial balance of foreign operation convert all the assets and liabilities in closing rate revenue items at uh, average rate and transfer the exchange difference to oci now there are so many other important points also for the foreign operation only as far as the foreign operation is concerned you must remember as per the business combination in days 103 whenever we consolidate our subsidiary there is a goodwill you remember goodwill so as soon as in in case of foreign subsidiary also the goodwill may, may arise so whatever the goodwill may arise what you need to understand and what you need to uh, uh, keep thinking that always calculate goodwill and nci first as per the foreign currency only like in the currency of foreign operation only suppose foreign operation that means foreign subsidiary has dollar as the currency now first i will calculate the goodwill nci in the dollar only and then such goodwill and nci will be translated into indian currency using closing exchange rate so see what is the step number 1 uh, consolidation of foreign subsidiary with parent and translation thereof so calculate the goodwill and gbp gbp means gain from bargain purchase either you will get 
goodwill or gain from bargain purchase and also calculate the nci and make all the working in functional currency of foreign operation now functional currency of foreign operation means functional currency of foreign operation means you calculate the goodwill you calculate the nci in the currency of subsidiary only okay you calculated it now convert translation of all assets all assets means machine building debtors goodwill all assets and all liabilities of that foreign operation into presentation currency at closing exchange rate so first calculate the goodwill calculate the nci calculate the gain from bargain purchase in the currency of that foreign subsidiary now convert all of them convert all of them all the assets all the liabilities including goodwill including nci into the closing exchange rate convert all the revenue items at average rate now understood or not okay now what you will get you will get the exchange difference you will get the exchange difference now once you will get the exchange difference suppose you got the exchange difference of 500 500 rupees and suppose your for uh, your your foreign subsidiary your investment in subsidiary foreign subsidiary is 80% the rest 20% is nci so whatever the exchange difference you will get rupees 500 now divide this exchange difference into two parts 80% it's your share and 20% it's nci's share so let us assume that uh, let us assume that this is the trial balance of foreign operation and in the trial balance there are assets including goodwill there are liabilities including non controlling interest and other than that there are incomes and there are expenses what you have to do all these are in dollar now suppose i want to convert from dollar to rupee rupee is holding company's currency so asset goodwill liabilities and nci must be at closing rate income expenses must be at average rate are you guys understanding or not then after the translation all the figures must be in rupee but definitely your trial balance may not be tallied so whatever the exchange difference came whatever the exchange difference came suppose 500 so divide that exchange difference of 500 inner column find it divide that exchange difference of 500 into two parts 80% and 20% what is 80% 80% is the share of holding company in foreign subsidiary that means 80% is the investment part and 20% belongs to nci so 500 into 20% that is 100 rupees so what i will do under nci i will add the 100 rupees of exchange difference and the rest 400 rupees belongs to consolidated profit and loss so 400 400 belongs to consolidated profit and loss so whatever the exchange difference arises that exchange difference will be divided into two parts the uh, the the uh, the consolidated profit and uh, sorry consolidated profit and loss it should be consolidated oci sorry not profit and loss it should be consolidated oci and 100 goes to nci it is the rule understood so cumulative translation difference consolidated oci parents proportionate share and nci share are you guys understanding or not this is this is it so this is the basically the entire funda of translating the foreign operation now we have two good questions on foreign operations question number 94 and question number 95 in our important question list now look at question number 95 first see this is the question number 95 again you can get the full discussion on this of this question by this qr code so now if you can see directly i am i am i am covering the solution part if you can see see uh, we calculated the goodwill we calculated the goodwill 1.4 billion and after calculating goodwill of 1.4 billion what we did we converted into closing exchange rate now we have two rates one is 82 euro on 30th september and on 31st march that is closing exchange rate there was a rate of 84 so what we did 1.4 goodwill sorry 1.4 goodwill has been converted at closing exchange rate 84 simple so what is the rule the rule is simple that calculate the goodwill and nci in the currency of foreign subsidiary only and then convert them into presentation currency of holding company okay using the closing exchange rate are you guys understanding so this is the question number 95 you must do that question okay now there is one question number 94 that is also very important i am showing you question number 94 now see again you you may you you will get the qr code for the entire discussion now see this is the trial balance of a foreign operation so foreign operation has 
फॉरन ऑपरेशन हैज पीपीई रिसीवेबल्स इशूड कैपिटल रिटेन अर्निंग प्रॉफिट फॉर द इयर अकाउंट पेबल अक्रूड लाइब्रेरीज ऑल इन यूएसडी नाउ आई नीड टू कन्वर्ट द इंटायर यूएसडी करेंसी बेस्ड ट्रायल बैलेंस इन टू द लोकल डॉलर एल एल मीन लोकल करेंसी ऑफ होल्डिंग कंपनी एंड इन दीज थिंग्स दीज टू फिगर्स These two figures are pre-populated. मतलब I don't need to convert issued capital and opening retained earning because they are already converted in the question. Now what I need to do? See in the question, if you in the question, what are the rates? See these are the rates. Rate at the beginning, average rate at the end. So at the end means closing rate. So what you will do? PPE one point one three, the receivable one point one three. Account payable one point one three, accrued liability one point one three, and what is the average rate one point one seven five? So what is, profit for the year? Profit for the year to be retranslated at one point one seven five. Why? Now why I applied one point one three because all the assets and liabilities need to be converted into closing rate. And why I applied one point one seven five because it is the average rate and average rate need to be applied on the revenue item that is income and expense in totality. There is a profit. So on the profit figure you apply this. On the other figure you apply one point one three. Then after applying all these you will get the exchange difference. See you will get the exchange difference twenty four thousand. You will get the exchange difference. Whatever the exchange difference you will get you will transfer it to foreign currency translation reserve. Matlab OCI. You have to transfer it to OCI. In this question, they are not telling us about the percentage of holding, eighty percent, ninety percent. So we will assume that NCI is zero. The entire uh, difference to be translated, uh, uh, transferred to OCI. Are you guys understanding? Simple. But in detail, I have already explained this question in detail. In detail means full question by solving it uh, through this QR code. Okay. Now come back again. Disposal of foreign operation. I told you that. The exchange difference you need to keep it in OCI your own share, and as far as the share of NCI, you uh, transfer the ex portion of NCI share into the NCI only. Now, what will what will what will happen when you dispose of the foreign operation? When you will dispose of the foreign operation? Dispose means disposal means sale. Disposal means sale. Sale of foreign subsidiary. You was having, you were having eighty percent share in the foreign subsidiary. You sold your eighty percent share in the foreign subsidiary. You were having eighty percent share in the foreign subsidiary, but you disposed of only twenty percent. So there are so many cases, na? That out of eighty percent you sold twenty percent, rest you have sixty percent still. Out of eighty percent you sold entire eighty percent. So there can there can be two two different cases without loss of control, with loss of control. Without loss of control means I have eighty percent in eighty percent share in foreign subsidiary. I just sold ten percent, twenty percent. But after selling twenty percent, still I have sixty percent, and sixty percent means more than fifty percent. That means still I have the control. Still I have the control with the sixty percent. So this, uh, you are disposing of the par partial investment of your subsidiary without losing the control. After disposing twenty percent, you still have twenty sixty percent without losing the control. The next. You are having eighty percent share in the subsidiary, and you are selling entire eighty percent, or you are selling seventy percent. Now you have only ten percent. So technically, you are selling the subsidiary with losing the control. What will happen in that case? Simple. Suppose if you are losing the control, if you are losing the control, the entire exchange difference, which was earlier accumulated in parents OCI, will be reclassified to P and L, because finally the foreign operation has been disposed of. If the foreign operation has been disposed of with loss of control, the entire accumulated exchange difference, which is appearing in the OCI of parent, will be reclassified to profit and loss. See, here also I told you that first you have to classify it OCI, then reclassify to PNL in case of disposal of foreign operation, loss of control. Here I can write loss of control. Okay, so now what what is written here? Parent share of CTD, CTD means cumulative translation difference, appearing in notes OCI shall be transferred to consolidated P&L. Now, since you have lost the control in a subsidiary, definitely you have to de-recognize the net assets of subsidiary, de-recognize the NCI of subsidiary, de-recognize everything. So, sir, what of what about the exchange difference pertaining to NCI? See, you have to de-recognize the entire NCI. So, by de-recognizing the entire NCI, NCI, the exchange difference pertaining to NCI will also be de-recognized. Okay, so the exchange difference which is appearing in holding companies OCI to be reclassified to P&L. Exchange difference pertaining to NCI will be de-recognized in the form of de-recognition of NCI. What to do with the NCI's uh, cumulative translation difference share? Since NCI is to be fully de-recognized, therefore CTD which is already included in NCI shall also be de-recognized. 
I hope you got the point. But suppose you are disposing of your investment, part of the investment in subsidiary and such disposal is without loss of control. That means uh, out of 80%, you sold 20% only. Still you have 60%. Now what you will do? Uh, suppose you have your accumulated OCI share of 400 rupees as per 80%. As per 80% share. Now out of 80% share, you sold 20%. So what you will do? 400, if it is for 80%, how much should be for 20%? 400 divided by 80 into 20, it should be 100. So now what you will do, you will not reclassify the entire 400. Out of 400, you still has 60% share now. So out of 400, you just transfer 100 rupees. What you will do? Parents share of CTD, CTD means uh, cumulative translation difference, that means 400 already shown in OCI, shall be proportionately transferred to NCI. Sir, NCI, mat matla, what is the journal entry? OCI account debit to NCI. So, whatever the difference accumulated in your OCI, transfer 100 rupees from OCI to non-controlling interest. Sir, why we are doing so? Technically, earlier you was having, you were having 80% share. But now, you sold your 20% part. That means the NCI will get increased by 20%. See, earlier, what was the old position? Old position was 80 and 20. Now, what is the new position? 60 and 40. So, the NCI will be increased now. So, what you have to do? You have to re, uh, reclassify 100 rupees from OCI to non-controlling interest. In which case, in the case when you don't lose the control. Without losing the control, transfer the proportionate OCI balance to NCI. I hope you got the point. Understood? I hope you got the point. I will give you the entire summary of exchange difference at the end of this session. Don't worry. Okay. So now everything we understood. Uh, now only two things are remained. One is change in functional currency and one is net investment in foreign operation. Let us come to the change in functional currency. It is not so much important. See, I already told you that out of the three currencies, foreign can be more than one. Presentation currency can also also more than one. But about functional currency, it is only one. Okay. And it is not a matter of choice. It is a matter of the primary economic environment you are in which your entity is getting operated. So functional currency can only be one. Now the question arises whether we can change our functional currency after so many years. Suppose our primary economic environment has been changed or our indicators are now getting changed. Earlier we decided that our functional currency is rupee. Now our as per the indicators now our functional currency is getting changed from rupee to dollar. Can we change it? Yes, we can change it. Change in functional currency. So whenever you change your functional currency, Suppose my old functional currency was rupee. Now my new functional, functional currency is uh, dollar. What I have to do? I have to translate my entire trial balance, which is in rupees, which contains assets, liabilities, incomes, expenses, equity, capital, all the items which are into, which are currently in rupees, convert them into dollar. Translate all assets, liabilities, equity, expense, incomes into new functional currency based on the exchange rate on the date of change, on the date of change. Whenever you want to change your functional currency from rupee to dollar, dollar to rupee and whatever. On the date of change, whatever the exchange rate is there, translate them. Translate all the items at one single rate. So when you are translating all the items at one single rate, there is no question of exchange difference. No exchange difference will arise. No exchange difference will arise since all the items are translated into same rate. Okay. Now, change in functional currency shall always be lead to prospective effect. Prospective means you don't need to change your, uh, you don't need to make the retrospective adjustment. But change in functional currency may result into change in presentation currency also. So whenever you are, you are changing your functional currency, it is prospective effect. But because of changing functional currency, suppose you are changing your presentation currency also. What you have to do? It's not an issue. Earlier your presentation currency was dollar. Now your presentation currency is rupee. You have to change your last year corresponding figures also. So restated with the new presentation currency. Previous year figures are also restated with the new presentation currency. So there are two things. Change in functional currency, prospective effect. No need to look into the uh, past. But change in presentation currency, retrospective effect means current year items to be translated. Even the last year items are needed to be translated. Understood or not? That's it. So this is not, not so much important. Now, last but not the least. Net investment in foreign operation. What is net investment in foreign operation? It is quite simple. Net investment in foreign operation means one party has given the loan to its subsidiary, a sister concern, a branch, an associate 
and this loan is a permanent funding. That means the loan given by one party to another party is never get settled, is never get repaid in future. Yes, permanent funding. So what is the meaning of net investment in foreign operation? Is a parent has given loan to its foreign subsidiary, foreign operation means foreign subsidiary, parent has given long term loan to its foreign subsidiary and it is not planned to repay it. And it is, it is, it is a like, it is, it is a probable that it will never be get settled in the future. Okay, understood. So why we are calling it as a net investment in foreign operation? Technically, I am the parent company. I have invested. Uh, I have already invested in the equity share of subsidiary company. I have already an investment in equity share of the subsidiary. Now, now I am giving one loan to my subsidiary, which I will never get repaid. The loan will never be get repaid. The loan will never get settled. You are understanding or not? So technically, the loan given by me to my foreign subsidiary, it is also as good as investment. So it becomes an investment in foreign operation. It's simple. So investment in foreign operation means it is a permanent funding. Either I have given loan to my foreign subsidiary or foreign subsidiary has given loan to me. But the main thing is, main thing is for which settlement is neither planned nor likely to occur in the foreseeable future. It is like that. First you understood now? Now. If it is the case of permanent funding, what will happen? See, I am the parent. I have given my loan. I have given a loan to foreign subsidiary in rupee and I have functional currency as my rupee. Now let's understand the same through the example. Let's, let's understand the same through one example. Through one example. Okay. Suppose there is one holding company. There is one subsidiary company and this is foreign subsidiary. Holding company has rupee as a functional currency. Subsidiary has dollar as a functional currency. Okay. Now holding has given a long term loan. Long term loan. It is called net investment in FO. So if this is a case, so technically from subsidiary's point of view, FO, from subsidiary's point of view, long term loan in rupee. Holding company has given the loan in the rupee only. So technically for holding company, it is not a foreign currency transaction. Holding company has a functional currency of rupee and holding company has given the loan into rupee only. So it is not a function, foreign currency transaction. But for subsidiary, it is a foreign currency transaction. For subsidiary, it's a foreign currency transaction. So technically, what subsidiary will do? Subsidiary will apply this rule. Initial recognition, spot date, balance sheet date, it will be an FCMI, foreign currency monetary item. It is a loan, loan is a loan is a monetary item to be translated at closing rate, and the exchange difference will be transferred to PNL. So technically, subsidiary what will do? Subsidiary, subsidiary will apply the rules and exchange difference will be transferred to the PNL of subsidiary. And if it transfer to the PNL of subsidiary, look at the PNL, the incomes in dollar, the incomes in dollar, the expenses are in dollar, and the exchange difference, suppose it is a loss, it is also in dollar. Here also the exchange difference may happen in dollar. So technically subsidiary has taken a loan. This loan for subsidiary is a FCMI and translated at closing exchange rate. The difference, exchange difference will be transferred to the PNL of subsidiary. This is not uh, tough. Don't worry. Now everything is going well. But when this PNL will be, when this PNL will be translated, translated, yes, translated into rupee. Sir, why we are translating this PNL into rupee? Because for the purpose of consolidation, holding company has the functional currency rupee. Now translated into rupee, this entire PNL when translated into rupee, what you will apply? You will apply the average rate for all the PNL items. Yes or no? The income to be average rate. Exchange difference, also it is a kind of income, average rate. Expense, exchange difference at average rate. You, you know now. Now the same PNL of subsidiary, same PNL of subsidiary, income will be translated in rupee. Expenses translated in rupee. Even the exchange difference will be translated in rupee. But the exception is the income of PNL will be retained in the PNL only. The expense of the PNL retained in PNL only. 
the exchange difference which is appearing in the PNL of foreign operation. Now the same exchange difference after getting translated, it is not to be shown in the PNL of subsidiary or PNL of uh, the group. Why? Because this exchange difference is an unrealized profit or unrealized loss. It is not actually the realized one. Why? From group point of view, it is never be settled. The loan will never become settled. From think from group point of view. From group point of view, the loan will never get settled. It is a it is a net investment in foreign operation. What is the meaning of net invest investment foreign operation? Permanent funding. Since the loan will never get settled, in that case, the exchange difference will become unrealized gain or loss. And India says that from group point of view, this exchange difference after translation will not be transferred to PNL, will be translated to the, will be transferred to the OCI. So the exchange difference, here you will write, exchange difference, here you will write in the OCI. This is only the rule. So what is the rule? See, the exchange, uh, the, under the SFS, SFS means the individual financial statements of subsidiary. The exchange difference will be capped under PNL only. But from group point of view, under the group, the same exchange difference will be, when, when you will translate, translate it based on average rate, then you will keep it under the OCI. Exchange difference on translation to function to parent transfer to OCI until the disposal of parent, uh, foreign operation. Now this exchange difference will be kept under OCI until you are selling your foreign operation, until the disposal of foreign operation or until the loan becomes repayable. Guys, that is a simple thing. So overall, this was the treatment of net investment in foreign operation. Now let me tell you one thing. What I am doing you, the entire India's 21 is over. But this is, look at this. I have already written one summary. Summary of all extent differences. See, in entire India's 21, in that entire India's 21, there are so many type of extent differences in the so many cases. So what I did, I divided all the type of extent differences into four parts. Now, in the entire India's 21, there are four type of extent differences. The one, extent, the first is simple, extent difference on foreign currency transactions. There is a foreign currency transaction need to translate uh, for need to translate into functional currency. Every time, whatever whenever the exchange difference arise, transfer it to PNL. Simple. Second, exchange difference on in case of net investment in foreign operation, which we have discussed uh, uh, right now. So, in case of net investment in foreign operation, as far as the SFS individual financial statements of foreign operation, transfer it to PNL. But as far as the group, transfer it to OCA. Of course, you can reclassify to PNL when the FO is getting disposed of. The third exchange difference arises when you have your functional currency financial statement, but you need to translate your functional currency financial statement into another presentation currency financial statement. I told you I have my shares listed in NASDAQ, American Stock Exchange. So I need to submit my financial statement into American authorities also in dollar. So if I'm translating my financial statement from functional currency to presentation currency, whatever the exchange difference will arise, I will transfer it to OCI. Last but not the least. My, sub, my foreign subsidiary is there and I need to translate the entire trial balance of my foreign subsidiary into my functional currency for the purpose of consolidation. In that case, exchange difference will arise. Out of such exchange difference, parents share in such exchange difference will be kept under OCI and the NCI's share of such exchange difference will be added in the NCI. Simple. That's all. So just take the screenshot of this exchange difference. Just take the screenshot. Take the screenshot of this page. There are four kind of exchange differences. The first is most important and uh, the fourth one is important. First and fourth are most important. The second and third are quite lesser important. Okay. All right. Now, after taking a screenshot, one more question you should refer. Question number 92 from this, uh, these notes. The notes are in the description. This is a very good question. I must say this is a question of uh, two India's combination, combination of financial instrument, India's 109 and India's 21. It's a very good question. I will not discuss this question right now because I want to keep this lecture very short for the purpose of revision before exams. So if you want uh, me to discuss this solution, just uh, scan this QR code and you will get the proper discussion video of this question. Okay. So I hope guys, you, you have liked this lecture. Huh? Uh, I have recorded this lecture especially considering South Indian students because I am getting so much demand from my South Indian students also from Chennai, Hyderabad, Kerala and so many other places. So guys, if you are a South Indian student, please do comment, please do comment and give your feedback about this lecture. Give your feedback about the chart book. 
how how you have liked the chart book give your comment about the important question list along with this uh, special facility of qr code even if you are from north india if you are a hindi belt student also do comment how you like the chart revision and how you like this lecture so that i can get the more energy to record so many sessions thanks a lot guys i'll not waste your time all the very best for exams keep watching my lectures keep subscribing my channel and we'll meet you on the next next, next lecture thanks a lot